SLT Mobitel The Connection Nimma vishesha sunlight nishpadana milade gena Sri Lanka ya manudam diyamana api savimak karama sunlight kya Tonight, evolving situation. Health Ministry issues revised guidelines under Alert Level 3. A raft of restrictions put in place with immediate effect with pubs and bars closed until further notice. Indomitable. The country's immunisation programme forges ahead as a record daily COVID caseload reported for a fifth consecutive day. We have vaccinated 60,757 people during this week. Robust and resilient. Sri Lanka Medical Association and the College of Internal Medicine give a vote of confidence on the country's healthcare system amid the pandemic. More hospitals are being opened up each day and more ICUs are being opened up each day. Also dispels concerns over COVID-19 vaccine. This vaccine works well for the UK variant. The benefits far outweigh the risk. Robbed. The working community deprived of another May Day celebration by COVID. All that and much more coming up on First at Night, this Saturday, the 1st of May, 2021. Alcohol adango hand sanitizer bavita karanne. Lady Roga atikarana visha bija valuta erahiva satan karanne. Hantun vadi me mila rupial tun se panhai. From Ada Verana, this is Ada Verana First at Night. Live from Studio 24 in Colombo. Good evening and welcome to First at Nine. I'm Thamke Kanai. Now, in face of a tide of COVID-19 infections, the Director General of Health Services, Dr. Asela Gunawardena, today issued a revised set of guidelines to be adhered to by the public. Revised under Alert Level 3, these guidelines will come into effect immediately until further notice. In response to the surge in the number of infections in the country brought on by a third wave of the novel coronavirus, the Ministry of Health issued a revised set of guidelines under Alert Level 3. Signed by Director General of Health Services Dr. Asela Gunavardhana, these guidelines will be in operation with immediate effect until further notice. With regard to public transport under Alert Level 3, the maximum capacity of passengers in a bus or train should match the number of seats available. For private taxis and three-wheelers, the maximum number of passengers allowed is limited to just two. The guidelines instruct utility service providers to provide all essential services with the use of minimum staff and others to work from home. It also applies to the private sector companies. According to the revised guidelines, supermarkets, shopping malls, financial institutions, clothing shops, grocery shops and bakeries are only allowed to accommodate 25% of the total customers in the space available. It says 1.5 square metres of available walking space can be considered adequate for one person. Street or mobile vendors, filling stations and construction sites are allowed to operate with strict adherence to guidelines under the concept of DREAM. Crucial prevention measures against the coronavirus are captured in the acronym DREAM. D for distancing, maintaining a physical distance of at least one meter from others, avoid public gatherings, crowded places, close contact settings and confined and enclosed spaces. R E for respiratory etiquette, A for aseptic techniques and M for ensuring the wearing of a face mask. In the case of courts, a maximum of 25% of the total number of people that could be accommodated in the available space are permitted. However, at prisons, no visitors will be allowed. Via the revised guidelines, schools, preschools, higher education centres, including universities and tuition classes, are instructed to be closed until further notice. As for weddings, they will not be permitted until the 20th of this month and the decision will be reviewed in line with the prevailing situation. Meanwhile, funerals will have to be conducted within 24 hours after the remains are released from hospital. Also, the number of attendees are cut down to a maximum of 25. Indoor or outdoor parties and public gatherings are not allowed until further notice. 
The Director General of Health notes that at places of worship, no collective activities or gatherings should be conducted. Cinemas and theatres across the country should be kept closed until further notice. As for restaurants, only a maximum of 25% of the total seating capacity will be allowed. Wine stores can operate but under the dream concept. However, pubs, bars, casinos, nightclubs and betting centres as well as spas are ordered to remain closed until further notice. As far as hotels, rest houses and guest houses are concerned, a maximum of 50% of the total capacity will be allowed. Now, the rapid surge in the number of coronavirus cases compelled the isolation of multiple Gram and Iladari divisions today as well. Closure of schools in the meantime were extended until the Friday the 7th, with a date of reopening to be determined upon the developments on the pandemic front. Dhamma schools in the island too will follow suit. With the exponential rise in the number of COVID-19 infections across the country, measures were taken to isolate a number of Grama Niladari divisions following risk assessments in order to prevent a further spread of the virus. Accordingly, two Grama Niladari divisions of Nampamunua and Gorakapitiya that come under the jurisdiction of the Piliandala police area were isolated from 8.30 this morning. In the police area of Ambalanguda, the Gram Niladari divisions of Godahena and Talgas Goda were isolated today. 189 infections have been detected from the Dehiyattakandia MOH division since last Tuesday and among them 139 were identified from an apparel factory in the area. As a result, Gram Niladari divisions of Dehiyattakandia and Kadirapura that fall under the Dehiyattakandia police area were also isolated today. In addition, the Hapugoda Grama Niladari division of the Kalavana police area is also placed under isolation. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Education has decided to keep the schools island-wide closed until the 7th of May, with reopening the week after to be determined on the developments of the pandemic front. <laughs> हैकिता किटकिरी में आवश्य भी नहीं है ना सिकुड़ा दा एक ऐने मई हाथवन दा अभी तीरने एक प्रकाश ये डर पत्कर नो आ ईलंग साथी पांच साल विरुद्ध किरी में टो पुलवान वात और ने एक्टिव नो आधे संबंधे न अभी करना क्रिया मार्ग के पीले बंदे अभी ये तीरने देनुं देनुं आ in accordance with the government's decision, the Archbishop's House announced that all Catholic schools too will remain closed until Friday the 7th. Also, the Commissioner-General of Buddhist Affairs, Sunandakarya Peruma, has instructed to close all Dhamma schools in the country until further notice. कोविड <laughs> Singapore will stop entry or transit for visitors with recent travel history to Sri Lanka from tomorrow. The COVID-19 multi-ministry task force said that the same measure will be taken for those with travel history to Bangladesh, Nepal and Pakistan. The ban covers all long-term pass holders and short-term visitors who have been in the four countries in the last 14 days, including transit. It will also apply to those who have obtained prior entry approval from Singapore authorities. Now then, for a sixth consecutive day, Sri Lanka confirmed a record daily COVID-19 caseload today as 1,699 fresh infections were confirmed in the island. That said, the Public Health Inspectors Union is sceptical, saying that the numbers don't reflect the ground situation. They say that it is far worse than what is suggested by the figures. For a fifth consecutive day, Sri Lanka posted a record daily COVID-19 caseload. 1,666 infections in total were confirmed in the island yesterday. The epidemiology unit said the new cases were recorded across 24 districts. The Kurunagala district reported the highest number of fresh cases with 329. The Colombo district recorded 317 infections, while Gampaha confirmed 193. The districts of Gaul, Mathali and Kaluthara had 114, 101 and 100 COVID-19 new cases confirmed, respectively. 
Meanwhile, 93 cases of the virus were reported from Ampara, with 54 coming from Kandy, 43 from Jaffna, 41 from Polonarua, and 36 from Munaragala. What's more, 215 more cases were reported across 13 other districts. Also among yesterday's caseload were 26 imported cases. As for today, 1,699 new COVID-19 infections have been confirmed so far. Meanwhile, President of the Public Health Inspectors Union, Upul Rohana, says that though daily case loads in excess of 1,500 are being reported at present, the numbers with the same magnitude should have been reported several days earlier. He added that the current numbers released via laboratories and the current COVID-19 patient numbers do not reflect the country's current virus situation as the reality is more severe and dangerous. In the meantime, Chief Epidemiologist at the Epidemiology Unit, Dr. Sudat Samaravira, says that despite the rapid increase in COVID-19 cases in the country, the island's hospitals are equipped with the necessary facilities and are capable of catering to the rising patient numbers. We should keep in mind that if somebody is having signs and symptoms of COVID-19, like fever, cough, sore throat, chest pain, difficulty in breathing, they should not stay at home, should come to the hospital immediately and also should seek medical advice and, if necessary, been tested. So there are increased number of cases coming to the hospitals, but still our hospital has the capacity to cope up with this. So because of that, people who are having symptoms should come rather than staying at home. This is very important to control the disease at this moment. In the meantime, Sri Lanka's COVID-19 related death toll rose to 678 yesterday after 11 deaths were confirmed. Among the 11 deaths confirmed yesterday, five had taken place yesterday itself. The cause of death of the four victims is COVID pneumonia, while one fatality was down to severe heart failure. The other patient had died of acute respiratory distress syndrome. Meanwhile, six of the COVID deaths confirmed yesterday had occurred on the 27th, 28th and 29th of April. Meanwhile, Chief Epidemiologist Dr. Sudat Samaravira says that the country's inoculation program is currently being conducted at full speed as a total of 60,757 people have been administered with the second dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine during this week alone. We have vaccinated 60,757 people during this week with the second dose of Covishield so that we will be continuing this and also we are having a Sinopharm vaccine that has been donated by the Chinese government close to 600,000 doses that means that we can vaccinate fully close to 300,000 people. World Health Organization technical committee has reviewed this vaccine. We hope that their decision will come in the next week and if they give a approval for the emergency use of Sinopharm, we will be using this vaccine to vaccinate our country people. And also that we are expecting Sputnik V vaccine next week, so that also will be used for the vaccination of our people. In one hand, when we are controlling the disease with the surveillance, identifying the cases and treating them, we will use the vaccines to prevent the disease and the severe forms of disease. So with that, we hope that we will be able to control this current increased number of cases very soon and the public cooperation and their contribution is very much essential for this effort. With 503 COVID-19 patients being given the all clear to go home today, the overall tally of COVID recoveries rose to 96,478. That puts the country's active number of COVID-19 cases at 12,294. <laughs> Now, the Sri Lanka Medical Association and the College of Internal Medicine urge people to place their trust in the island's healthcare system as it is well equipped to handle the COVID-19 pandemic with more and more facilities added to the system as the situation evolves. Speaking to Indivari Amwatha on our current affairs program at Hyde Park on Other Derana 24, the chiefs of the two bodies also addressed the concerns hovering over the COVID-19 vaccine and moved to dispel any fears of the jab's level of efficacy. What about uh, them reporting that they do not have a way of securing a hospital bed or even yes. a quarantine facility, whether it be a private centre? Yes. So what is yes. the situation now? How do we mitigate this? Yeah, when a patient tests positive, then the, the Ministry of Health will give the option for that 
person, if he's able to be in a private setup, like mm -hmm. in a hotel which is designated for that, then that person is given that chance. But of course, the hotels will also soon get filled with people Correct. and then we will have to look for more spaces. Everyone is, is given care. So then if that person cannot afford private care, then he's transferred out to a government center. Actually, even in the second wave, we had identified about 12,000, roughly about 12,000 beds in government sector hospitals designated for COVID. So right now, I think we are almost at the brink of filling those uh, places. So more hospitals are being opened up each day and uh, more ICUs are being opened up each day. I uh, got to know that uh, the Karapitiya Teaching Hospital, one of the ICUs was transferred to a COVID ICU about a couple of days uh -huh. ago. So the same thing is happening everywhere. Now, if a patient uh, has symptoms, and if that person thinks this could be COVID, he may not be diagnosed yet, but he should go to the nearest hospital. Uh -huh. In each hospital, there is a designated area to keep these patients. State hospitals specifically, is there such a shortage or uh, is there a mechanism to mitigate the situation if at all? I mean we are talking uh, of two things. One is the ICU beds, mm -hmm. the other is the, the beds allocated for COVID right. patients. So the number that had been allocated for COVID patients was about 11,000 mm -hmm. in I mean sort of for the whole Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. But then at the same time the activities and the contributions from our forces as well as uh, by mobilizing the other wards and the staff from other hospitals there are new centers getting open up every day mm -hmm. so that actually is a dynamic process so that there won't be any possibility that there won't be a bid for patients once they have come our hospital has to see that if there are no beds covid beds in that particular hospital they have to find a bed for that patient and to transfer to a place where a bed is available so that system that sketch is in well existence in the government hospitals in Sri Lanka. It's also important for us to tell people how they need to report of any suspect case or if they suspect that they have come into contact with a COVID patient or if you have tested positive for COVID-19. If a person is already tested mm -hmm and he or she gets to know that the report is positive, then there is a mechanism in place. Okay. Of course, I mean, that person need not directly inform the ministry, but what will happen is the ministry will get to know from the lab and the ministry will, through the PHI, inform the person that he or she is positive. So that's the official communication mm -hmm. from the ministry. And then they will, at some point, take the patient out. It may not be immediately within the next two, three hours. It may, may take a little time. The person will be uh, taken out to a treatment center. Uh, even with the new variant, the symptoms have not changed that much. I mean, the symptoms are that you would get fever and then lots of body aches, muscle pains, headache, mm -hmm. and also a dry cough. And the really uh, sort of worrying symptoms Symptom is shortness of breath. That is like, I mean, you could be all right at rest, but if you try to, say, take a few steps or if you try to do something, if you try to exert, you will feel the tiredness. Okay. There have been some reports in the media about, you know, suddenly getting short of breath and becoming very ill. It would not happen that okay. way. I mean, you would get the initial symptoms and then if you concentrate on your symptoms, then you would get to know the point when at which you feel more ill, mm -hmm. you feel more short of breath. Right. So, I mean, you shouldn't wait for that long and if you have the symptoms of a flu in this day it's sort of more like to be COVID-19 so you should inform your area PHI and also there are numbers given by the health ministry for you to contact once you call they will uh, answer the call and they will maybe take you out to, uh, safely mm -hmm. because we would not advise the person to go by public transport because that could you know lead to spread of the illness so that person is brought to a testing center and then the test is done and he is taken back home until the test result is known. So there is a streamlined mechanism there. I know it's it's a situation where the public could panic because of the rising numbers and, and the reports of deaths and so on, but they should stay calm and abide by all the health precautions that are given. And if they do unfortunately get the illness, they should not fear, they should come to uh, the hospitals and they'll be taken care of. Now we're also talking about the effectiveness or the responsiveness of the vaccines that have been introduced in Sri Lanka. There may be some sort of concerns among the public whether
whether you can still come into contact with uh, COVID-19 or whether the first dose or second dose is sufficient. I think this question also needs a lot of clarification and explanation. We have more data about the AstraZeneca vaccine. Mm -hmm. So if we talk about the AstraZeneca vaccine, the most of the people who have been vaccinated mm -hmm. have not got the illness. I mean, what is generally said is that even if they do pick up the illness, it will be cleared by the body because of the uh, immune response the body generates through the memory cells created by the vaccination. Let's say a person is vaccinated, he comes into contact with a person with COVID-19, he could still get the virus inside the body. It may even grow in the throat, but it will not cause a bad infection like a pneumonia. It will not uh, lead the person to be admitted to an ICU and it will not cause death. That is what the vaccine data has shown. In fact, in the UK, they have used it widely and uh, there is what we call now there are trial data trial data means you know before the vaccine is approved there are various phases of trials that are done so those data also didn't show any severe illness but then they have real world data in the uk after having used millions and millions of doses of the vaccine and they have said that the rates of hospitalization ICU admissions, deaths have come down drastically. The same with the US and other countries in Europe as well. And the good thing about the vaccine is that this vaccine works well for the UK variant, B117. So the vaccine will protect people from the virus. Of course, there may be some breakthrough infection. So that is always seen. I mean, there were a number seen here, even in the US, it was the same, and in Europe as well. But the main thing is, I mean, our main focus is we will not worry about a common cold kind of infection or a little bit of flu but what we want to avoid is getting pneumonia and of course death so I mean, those are prevented very well by this AstraZeneca vaccine so there have been reports on some of some rare side defects but the benefits far outweigh the risk and uh, the public should not fear that and should get the vaccine and it will protect okay. definitely today is the international labor day dedicated to working communities around the world Dating back millennia, May Day celebrates laborers and encourages them to be aware and to stand up for their rights. For the second consecutive year, May Day celebrations across the island and around the world were interrupted by the prevailing COVID-19 pandemic. In 2019, the May Day celebrations were muted owing to the Easter Sunday terrorist attack that year. Last year, COVID-19 robbed the working community of the May Day celebration. And this year, it was the same story. Various grounds in the country, which would have been filled with people under normal circumstances, looked lonesome on a day of this importance. In the meantime, President Gotabi Rajapaksa, in his message to mark the May Day, says that the government has safeguarded national security and sovereignty as promised. Further, quote, we have ensured that no harm would befall on our national legacy and heritage. Steps are being taken to implement policies for the growth of local industries and agriculture-based economy. A clear, well-defined economic plan has been formulated and being implemented to eradicate poverty, which is the biggest burden faced by a substantial segment of the working class. The working community is one of the most adversely affected groups in the world due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The government has clearly understood that reality faced by our working masses. Hence, the government is working with commitment to ensure better living standards for its citizens without imposing limitations that obstructs the economic activities of the working people. The working people have to refrain from celebrating May Day and holding rallies for the second consecutive year due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Nevertheless, we are aware of the strength of your struggle and its determination and commitment." Unquote. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa too issued a message to mark the May Day. Das Vishega, Varshe Sandha Mahavishing in the Patkalaya Lakeni, Watukam Karwan Sandha, Purundu, Pial Dasi Dainik Vatuba, Labadim Takim Apalebu Jagrania. Quit Vasangati Hamu Wad, Samaja Artika Sangwar the Navy Living, Tuara Vesena, Ubagi Kapavim, Age Karnatar. Wasanga the Tatu, Palni, Kirima, the Dak Mudai, Katu, Vilwin, Magi Pranam, Pudakarana, Mea Avastava Karagano, Apirati, Vedakar and Janata, Jaivio. Headline inflation has decreased to 3.9% in April from 4.1% in March 2021. Now, this was conveyed in the monthly statistics published by the Central Bank yesterday. Headline inflation as measured by the year-on-year -year change in the Colombo Consumer Price Index decreased to 3.9% in April 2021 from 4.1% in March 2021.
The Statistics Department of the Central Bank says that this was driven by monthly decreases of prices of items in the food category. Meanwhile, food inflation year-on-year -year decreased to 9% in April from 9.6% in March 2021, while non-food inflation year-on-year -year remained unchanged at 1.8% in April. The change in the CCPI measured on an annual average basis decreased marginally to 3.9% in April from 4% in March. Meanwhile, the monthly change of CCPI recorded a marginal decline in April 2021. This was due to price decreases observed in items of the food category. Within the food category, prices of coconut, vegetables, red onion and big onion decreased in April. Meanwhile, prices of items in the non-food category recorded an increase during the month, mainly due to price increase observed in the transport subcategory. The co-inflation year-on-year, which reflects the underlying inflation in the economy, decreased marginally to 3% in April from 3.1% in March 2021. Meanwhile, the annual average co-inflation remained unchanged at 3% in April. And that's it from all of us here at First at Nine. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.